Hey everyone, hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So what you are about to see is a month with my graphic novels, which is a project that past Shelly is going to explain to you with such enthusiasm and hope. <laughs> Um, about about reading graphic novels and the excitement around it and the rules that I came up with. Well, spoiler alert, though not very spoiler alerty, my month didn't go according to the rules, but it did follow the spirit of the project. So what you're going to see is uh, Shelly about a month ago explaining her idea, and then you'll you're going to see a couple of the graphic novels that I've read, and then I'll pause and kind of tell you what went wrong and how the rest of the month wrapped up. Okay. Clear as mud? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's just get started. Hey everyone, hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So what are we doing today? Actually for you it's gonna to be today, but for me it's gonna be an entire month's worth of little video clips because I am embarking on an experiment. I realized a couple of weeks ago that I have not been picking up my graphic novels. And I have a small collection. I've been accumulating graphic novels and it is one of my favorite formats to read in. I just love looking at the artwork and the creativity and the way art works with language in order to tell a story. I really love that format. And so I have been collecting these graphic novels and yet I'm not reading them. So here are the rules for my next 30 days of graphic novels. And know that my rules are definitely more like guidelines or goals versus hard and fast rules. So rule number one, pick up a graphic novel every single day. Rule number two, read that graphic novel for 20 minutes or more. Rule number three, read only one graphic novel at a time. That's it. <laughs> those are my those are my guidelines and I'm basically just trying to see how it's going to go. So, <laughs> let's see how future Shelly did with this project. Harry living his best. Harry baby. This is the graphic novel collection that we are working with. So, I have from Hell by Alan Moore and illustrated by Eddie Campbell. Then there is In by Will McPhail. We have Persepolis by Marjane uh, Satrampi. American Born Chinese by Jean Luen Yang. Commute by Aaron Williams. Did you hear what Eddie Gain done? <laughs> this is by Harold Ske uh, Sketcher and Eric Powell, and then Blankets by Craig Thompson. So that's the collection that I'm working with, my personal collection of graphic novels, as you will. Hey guys, so it's actually May 3rd and I've already finished my first graphic novel. So this project is already <laughs> um, going really, really well. The graphic novel that I finished is In by Will McPhail. This tells the story of our main character whose name is Nick, who's right there on the cover. I would say he's a 30-something millennial and this story is set in present day. What's interesting is that Nick, the, the main issue in, uh, that Nick has in the story that he's trying to work out is why he's not connecting with others. And I think he feels a lot of, a lot of anxiety over the fact that he can't or has not been able to connect with others on a deeper level. And I thought that this graphic novel format actually lent itself really well to a story about worry and anxiety in our internal lives. And McPhail was able to tell this type of story so well in this format. The story is mostly told in black and white, but then when something does happen, and something very specific, I'm not gonna give it away, um, the, the scenes turn into color. And that technique was really, really uh, fascinating and it worked really well for me as a reader because whenever I saw the pieces in color, which doesn't come all that often, it almost like would take my breath away because of how beautiful and unique and different it is. And I found this book really funny. There's this whole development of a joke that has to do with coffee shops and the expensive and exorbitant amount that millennials pay on coffee. Um, and there's one coffee shop that is drawn in and it's called Ar Artisanal Kick in the Back. And here is the uh, the joke. So it says Artisanal Kick in the Back is exception has exceptional Wi-Fi. 
and only one power outlet, a twisted game designed by the owners to turn desperate writers against each other. The coffee is free, and instead they charge by the number of pages you write for your screenplay. Artisanal Kick in the Back operates on a staggering loss. <laughs> the Wi-Fi password is dialogue is not for exposition 2007. The jokes really got to me. I really enjoyed the the humor that McPhail kind of develops and plays on. I really enjoyed that. And the, another thing that worked really well within the book is that because of the graphic novel format, we get to, as readers, see what's going on on inside of Nick's head and then we also get a separate dialogue and I thought that this was done really well because there is such a conflict between what's going on in Nick's inner life and then what he's presenting to the world and since that's what this whole book is about I thought this type of format really lent itself well to exploring those types of issues. I think the most surprising thing about this book was that it was delightfully heartwarming all right, so yesterday, May the 4th, I was supposed to pick up a graphic novel for 20 minutes, and I put it off until the very last second, the last little moment where I could have a chance to read, and I think it was because I was trying to avoid picking out what to read next. I wasn't sure what to commit, what to commit myself to. So this is what I landed on. Blankets by Craig Thompson. Um, I don't know too much. I'm only a couple of, I'm like 50 or 60 pages in. <laughs> That's Harry. Here we go. Hi, Harry. <laughs> what are you looking at? Though I don't have too much to say about the novel right now, I wonder if this will come up again. On the days that I have to choose a new book to read, I wonder if I will put off choosing my next book until the very last second. So we'll see if that happens again. I'm gonna kick it old school and I'm gonna do a really quick outfit of the day. So the t-shirt that I'm wearing is a handmade t-shirt from a company um, that a friend owns. It's more of an acquaintance. We went to on a mission trip together years and years and years ago when we were in our youth. And now she runs um, her own like clothing and art business. Um, and so I'm wearing one of her shirts and it's just one of those little small business things. And then I'm wearing a pair of shorts and a belt and we're, tr we're not wearing shoes in the house anymore. We've cut that out. So I'm just wearing a, a pair of socks, but you probably won't see those. Hey guys, so it's May the 10th and my graphic novel reading project has been going really well. I only missed one day so far and that day was Friday, May the 6th, I believe. I didn't make the time to pick up any graphic novels that day and the inspiration and the idea of this project is to create a space to read graphic novels and not necessarily to do the project perfectly. And so I'm not worried about missing a single day. Um, and so far, the, for the rest of the days, my, the reading has gone really, really well. And I actually finished a book. So I finished Blankets by Craig Thompson. Okay, so Blankets, I'm gonna talk about this. Uh, this is an interesting, this is an interesting book. So in there is basically two timelines in this story. The first timeline is following um, our protagonist, Craig, even though this is slotted as fiction, the protagonist and the illustrator author have the same first name, so I'm wondering if this is a piece of autofiction, but I don't actually know. But our protagonist, Craig, in the first storyline, he is a child and he <laughs> has a little brother, Phil, and much like little children, they go through a lot of experiences together, some good and some traumatic. Um, and some of the traumatic, especially at the beginning of the earlier chapters, the, the trauma and the abuse that they explore did make me physically uncomfortable, probably because Phil and Craig are children and they are experiencing, um, yeah, abuse, which is difficult on, on any level. Um, and they are also, Phil and Craig, they grew up in a very Christian, strict Christian household. And so that is a huge shaking of their childhood, being um, in, in the household with the parents that are quoting Bible verses and have a standard of living that they want their children to live up to. The second storyline, which is probably the main storyline, is uh, Craig when he is a teenager. And at this point, Craig is very religious. He has taken Christianity on as his own, and he is very immersed in his beliefs. And it makes him a bit of an outcast. 
Um, and so he is going through high school, he meets somebody that he is very attracted to, and the story about when Craig is a teenager is about his, his conflict. Um, the way that religion bumps up with his desires and the way that he works through that and the choices that he makes. Um, I found that, so the, the heart, at the heart of this, it is a Billings Roman. It is a coming of age story about Craig and what, and really Craig's relationship with religion versus the woman that he meets. So something happened to me, an experience that happened to me that doesn't happen with every book, and it happened with this one, which I was really glad about, but about two thirds of the way through, I didn't want to put it down. And guess what? I didn't. <laughs> last night, I read the last like 200 pages in the evening, and that was wonderful. And also I'm learning that sometimes when I read in the evenings, it's a little bit, I don't love reading in the evenings because I really have to focus my mind, I'm gonna put this down, I really have to focus my mind on the words and sometimes it's just the evening and I have nothing left. <laughs> I'm done. I am like a deflated balloon. <laughs> There's nothing left except for the outer shell. Um, and so graphic novels have been a wonderful way to read in the evenings and I'm still extremely invested in the story and yet it seems to be not so mentally taxing when I've had especially a very trying and long day. So what happened with this project is about halfway through the month, life, life happened. <laughs> um, my life got a little bit busy, um, a tiny bit stressful, and I the, the rule, the guideline of picking up a graphic novel every day for 20 minutes started to feel very constraining. And I was realizing that I was very much like bumping up against that rule, even though it's not, it's not a very hard thing to do. Um, but I was, it was creating like a, a vortex of stress for me. And so about that time, it was again about halfway through the month, I didn't make it very far. <laughs> and I realized that the whole point of the project is to to, like get with my graphic novels to feel reconnected to feel like I have a space to read graphic novels um, and, and it, of which I didn't have before this project began so when I realized the project was quite constraining I decided to switch it up and I was like the whole point is that I want to pick up my graphic novels and so I am going to feel good whenever I pick up my graphic novels and the project instead of trying to read through a bunch or trying to keep myself to a schedule that I was like, I'm going to go with the, the feeling of the project <laughs> and I'm going to uh, like pat myself on the back, feel great for whenever I do pick up my graphic novels. And so I have like a better relationship with me and what I'm reading <laughs> rather than like, you're not hitting your mark every day and I'm starting to feel bad and like, don't, you know, it's like, this is, this project is supposed to be fun. And so I was like, how can I make it more fun? I'm going to get rid of the rules and I'm going to go with the spirit of what I wanted reading the graphic novels. I think you all got that. <laughs> okay. Um, and so what happened was is that I picked up, I picked up this next book and it didn't go well. So you'll get to see that. Hey you all, so it's been a little while since I updated you about my graphic novel reading project. Um, so I did have a little bit of a slumpy graphic novel reading week and I was, I wanted to jump back in and I was just having a hard time jumping back in and picking up my graphic novel. So I started with the book that I thought I would like the most. And so I picked up Commute by Erin Williams, which I, I found at a little free library and I was intrigued. I was intrigued as to what Erin Williams had to say about female shame because this is uh, an illustrated memoir of female shame. And I'm sad to report that I got about 70 pages uh, through this and I was not enjoying it at all. Um, and I, I didn't care for the artwork as well. And yeah, so I just made the decision that since I got it for free and I didn't want to spend any more time with it, I was going to DNF it. And the simplest and probably most straightforward explanation is when the, um, a writer is pointing out misogyny, um, sometimes it can uh, meander very easily into the realm of misandry. And when that happens, I tend to kind of lose interest or I, I, I don't really care for that. And that's like a huge kind of red flag for me when the book starts to sound very misandrous. And I felt like Erin Williams' take on her, the way that she was viewing the world, um, had a very misandrous skew to her to her storytelling. So yeah, so there was that. <laughs> so not, not for me. And then this is 
going to end up where <laughs> where it started, at least for me. It's going back to a little free library. After Aaron Williams' commute, after I decided to put that aside, DNF it, <laughs> get it out of my life, I decided to go with another book that has been staring me down and that I've been kind of nervous to read. So I started a uh, did you hear what Eddie Gain done? <laughs> Which is um, a graphic novel about a serial killer that did live. And I'm two chapters, uh, I'm two chapters in and I'm really already very intrigued and I'm really enjoying it. So kind of a, a balancing out. I had one book that didn't work for me and then one that is currently working for me. And yeah, I guess I'll see where I'm at when I check in next. And then after I DNF'd one, <laughs> after I DNF commute, what happened was is that I made that rule that I was going to read one graphic novel at a time. I broke that rule too because I found a very slim little graphic graphic work that I hadn't read and I bought ages ago and I wanted to read it. And so I read it while I was also reading the Eddie Gain book. So what I read was When the Wind Blows by Raymond Briggs. This was recommended to me in my 1001 Books You Must Read Before You Grow Up, which is a reference book about children's books that one must read before they become an adult. And this was one of them. Where the Wind Blows is actually a sci-fi graphic novel, although it's very, very slim. This is a very slim work. And it tells the story of this elder couple living in the countryside of England and they have recently found out um, they are being warned on the radio that there is an atomic bomb about to drop and so they it's, it's really like their process of what they're doing in order to shield themselves from this um, weapon that they they don't know much about and that they can only speculate about and it takes you through basically what happens after a, a a fictionalized atomic bomb falls um, in in Europe and and the devastating consequences of that and it tells you through this perspective of this elderly couple it was a really interesting read it wasn't exactly what I thought it would be it's all floppy <laughs> um, but um, it was still it was it was good and it really reminded me a, a bit it goes with in my mind I'm cataloging with it with uh, John Hersey's Hiroshima or Hiroshima is that right I always forget where to put the accent um, and Hiroshima I believe Hiroshima <laughs> <laughs> and um, which is about um, through the perspective of the Japanese what it was like when the atomic bomb fell, fell on Hiroshima in Japan um, right at the tail end of World War II. So it, it, this book it feels like a fictionalized version from the perspective of the English countryside and an, an elderly couple in England and what they would do in order to prepare and live through um, an atomic bomb. So that was it was really interesting it was it was definitely different than I had expected. Then I read sort of the book that I think a lot of people was surprised that I bought. And to be honest, I was surprised that I bought it too when I found out what it is. And it is, uh, did you hear what Eddie Gain done? Um, so if you, this this book, the reason why it came onto my radar was that it was Steve Donahue's number one nonfiction book for the year. And I was intrigued, I'm throwing books around today, because it's, it's a graphic novel. Um, which is why it's in this video. Um, and I had bought it because I had read that it was Steve Donahue's. Steve Donahue is a book critic here on BookTube, um, though his writing is published uh, all over the place. And um, and he does these best and worst lists. And I, I was like, I must read the best nonfiction that he claims is the best that was published in 2021. And that was this. So I bought it and then I found out this is about a serial killer. The serial killer that inspired Psycho, um, the serial killer that in some ways inspired Silence of the Lambs. And I have not watched those, those movies. I don't know much about horror culture because I'm a scaredy cat. I cannot handle, I cannot handle scary things. So I was incredibly apprehensive to pick up a book about the man who inspired basically these horrific figures um, in, in, hor in horror genre, in the horror genre now living today. So he inspired the horror figures that live in the horror genre today. I just said that, I was just trying to make it better, you know, and it didn't come out better. So what did I think about this book? Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm one of those people who would love, I would love to get to, into true crime podcasts, into true crime shows. I would love to watch, I would love to be part of the true crime 
fans, <laughs> but I can't, like I can't because it really does, like it eats at me emotionally. And so I'm going to set this down. Um, that type of media really, really gets under my skin. And I have a very difficult time separating like my imagination, like what my imagination conjures up and the contents of the book. So I'm like in a small town, somebody came and murdered, you know, family. I'm like, we live in a small town. We're going to be murdered next. I swear. Oh my gosh. Like that, <laughs> that is my reaction to it. So, you know, I'm like picking this up and I'm like, oh, I really hope I'm not going to get nightmares. And I will, I'm really happy to report that this tells the story of Eddie Gain from when he was a child and his relationship with his mother and his relationship with the town and his family and the odd and often just twisted dynamics that he had with the people around him. Um, and then they, it tells you sort of from the perspective of the town, how Eddie Gain was caught as a, as somebody who kills someone else and the contents of his house, which was really scary. And it takes you almost through an investigation of Eddie Gain and the discovery of his secret and very, very twisted life. So the book is a bit in two. You have Eddie Gain as a child and then Eddie Gain as an adult, but his adult perspective is often told through the reporter's eye, through those who are discovering um, who he is underneath in his private life. Um, and, and with that format and with the graphic novel format, it actually worked incredibly well because it gave me enough information to understand who Eddie Gain was and sort of scratch that curiosity itch that I think some of us have about serial killers. I know it's strange, but I, you know, I know y'all are out there, okay? Um, and so it sort of was able to scratch that curiosity itch about twisted people in the world, but it didn't give me any nightmares. And so I was, I was really thankful about that. And I got to, like, I don't want to watch Silence of the Lambs and I don't want to watch Psycho because I know that it will probably mess me up forever. <laughs> and so reading something like this, reading this in particular, uh, did you hear what Eddie Gain done? Um, by Harold Sklut, and Eric Powell. Um, <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm just happy that I was able to kind of dive in and sort of look around at the deep underbelly of humanity and then pop out and not have like any psychological damage done. So yeah, so if you're like me, a sensitive reader, but has um, a sort of twisted curiosity about the outliers of our humanity, um, I would recommend something like this or this in particular because I was able to read it and I tested myself and I didn't get any nightmares, which is which is, a, it's a feat, y'all. It's a feat. If you were a sensitive sleeper, you know. So yeah, that's the Eddie Gain book. Okay, and so I guess that brings you up to date to this moment right now. And right now I am reading yet another graphic novel. And I'm happy to report that it is going really well. And the graphic novel that I am reading is From Hell by Alan Moore. I took the dust cover off because it was shiny and making it kind of difficult to read. But I will show you... Let's see. My my, I have a signed copy. From Hell is a, a novel, graphic novel written by Alan Moore and illustrated by Eddie Campbell, and it's telling the story of Jack the Ripper. So yet another kind of dark and scary story. But um, I was reading it yesterday, and it didn't give me any nightmares. Now I don't know if we've gotten to like the heart of the scariness yet, but so far this is, it's kind of, um, graphic novels are, are a genre in which I can read horror and it doesn't like take something from my heart and doesn't damage me in some way. And that was a wonderful discovery. Now, as far as like the whole project goes, it's kind of interesting because I think when I make hard and fast rules, I, that those don't really work out for me. And so sometimes I have to go back to the drawing board and understand what this spirit of the project is. And the spirit of this project was to create a space in order to read graphic novels. And so by those parameters, by that measurement, I would say that this project was incredibly successful. And there are a handful of graphic novels that I want to continue to read and sort of finish up so that I have read all the graphic novels that I own. Um, and I feel really confident that I have the space and the time and the, the mental space to do that. 
Whereas I felt like <laughs> for a really long time, I mean, I bought the book In by Will McPhail and I bought, uh, did you hear what Eddie Gain done? I bought these, I bought these books like six months ago and it didn't take me long to read. I just wasn't taking the time to read them. So yeah, so by all, by all intents and purposes, <laughs> I would say this project is a success. I am going to continue to read at least from hell and, um, and now I have like a better like feeling towards some graphic novels, which is really, really what I wanted so though it didn't go perfectly it went it went perfectly well for me um yeah so that's it um tell me if you like this kind of video I know it was a bit messy but I thought it worked out <laughs> actually I don't know if it worked out I haven't edited it edited it edited it edit edited it edited it yet oh my gosh okay I'm leaving that in that's it for me you all thank you so much for watching thank you so much for being here and I will see you all in my next one bye Thank you.